pet people? My name is Lexi and welcome back to my channel. So today's video I'm excited to do because it has been very, very, very requested. Um, I've had a lot of messages on Instagram and a lot of people in my other videos ask me when I will be doing this video and this is going to be a Honduran milk snake care guide video. Yay! Um, as I said, a lot of people have requested this, and I filmed one, and then decided I wasn't happy with it, so I'm filming another one today, and yeah, we're just gonna get right into the video. Um, it's not gonna be too in-depth, it's not gonna be like a how to build a Honduran milk snake enclosure and all that stuff, or like how to breed Honduran milk snakes, I, I wanna do separate videos for those, so... We're just going to be talking about the basic care for a Honduran milk snake, and I hope you guys are excited as I am. I know some of you in particular have been messaging me quite frequently and waiting for this video, and it's finally here. So, yeah, thank you guys for watching, and I hope you keep watching. So getting right into today's video, I'm just going to do a little backstory real quick. So Honduran milk snakes, like mine, are actually some of the larger variety of milk snakes, which means that even though they do have similar care to milk snakes, this is specifically for Honduran milk snakes. If you have other milk snakes, yes, this can help you with that, but it's not going to be the exact care specifications. Um, especially with enclosure size because Honduran milk snakes are a bit larger um, compared to others. They're actually one of the larger colubrids uh, in the milk snake family, ranging anywhere from 5 to 6 feet for a full-grown female. The male is a little shorter, like 4 and a half, 5 feet, 5 and a half feet, but not as near as big as the females. Um, that's for most reptiles, though, so, you know. That should be assumed. Anyway, so they're obviously a little bit larger, and Honduran milk snakes come from, well, Honduras, um, Nicaragua, and Costa Rica areas in a very, not necessarily humid, but warm climate. Um, I know Pueblans also and Sinaloans come from warm climates as well. Most milk snakes do, but for Hondurans especially, that's what we're talking about today. So if you're here for a general milk snake care guide, I definitely recommend to keep watching so you can get some facts, but it's not going to be for your specific breed of milk snake. Anyway, now that we have that covered, we're going to jump right into it and go over Honduran milk snake housing. That's a mouthful. So obviously, like I said, Honduran milk snakes come from a warm environment. Honduras, Nicaragua, and Costa Rica. Warm environments, you know. And, as I said, they're also the larger of the milk snake family. I personally have mine in a... You can hear my dog barking in the background, I'm sorry. You can, like, barely hear him. Anyway, I have my milk snake in a vision enclosure, which I have a setup video of that one. I didn't do, like, the full setup video. Um, and then here's a picture of it when I'm holding up boo's most recent shed as you can see she's in the little corner in her water dish but the point is it's a very big enclosure they full growns uh require at least a three foot long by two foot deep and two foot tall enclosure hers is three foot long by two foot deep by 18 inches tall so it's not necessarily two feet tall but she doesn't climb a whole lot like i have a log in there you can see she doesn't really do a lot um which most milk snakes don't during the day because they're nocturnal and that means that they don't really need a uvb light they actually don't need a uvb light at all it won't hurt them if you have one but the main thing for them is having a warm environment and a large enough environment um if you looked at that picture you could obviously see that i had lots of enrichment in there with all snakes, you need a mm, heat gradient. Couldn't think of the word. You need a heat gradient. So you need the warm end of the enclosure and the cooler end of the enclosure. For milk snakes, specifically Hondurans, their warm end of the enclosure um, can come from either a heat mat, because they do actually like the abdominal heat, the warmth coming up underneath them, 
or you can have a ceramic heat emitter. I chose not to do a ceramic heat emitter due to the fact that they are in a vision enclosure and I just feel weird doing that with plastic. So I have a heat mat with a thermostat attached to it. Um, you can buy them off of Amazon, Josh's Frogs, different places like that, but that'll be a different video. Anyway, I have a thermostat to regulate the heat and uh, the warm spot of the enclosure should be 90 degrees. The cool end of the enclosure should be around 70 degrees. At night it can obviously drop lower. I wouldn't go lower than like 68. That 2 degrees would make a difference for a snake so I definitely recommend staying within that range. As I said you could do a basking bulb or a heat mat. Um, which means if you do a heat mat you don't need UVB but I do provide UVB for all of my reptiles even if they don't need it because in the wild obviously hunter and milk snakes they see the sun at some point the sun comes out and whether they're out or not it, it, they'll eventually see it at some point in their life so it won't hurt them to have more UVB it can only better them but it's not required if you don't have the resources for that anyway because they are nocturnal, again, they won't be out very much, so you are going to need to have hides that can completely cover them. One on the cool side, one on the warm side. And of course, some branches or fake plants or just other enrichment to keep them stimulated because milk snakes are eager eaters, which we'll get into later. But because of that, they can become lazy and obese if they don't have things to like move around on and interact with. So, moving on from like the heat part of housing, obviously they need it warm, but they also, unlike most people would expect, they don't need as high of a humidity as you would think. They actually thrive in low to mid humidity, like, they do fine. Um, I keep my humidity at the low end is like 45%, but I keep it around 50%. They like humidities of 50 to 70%. They do good in that, but they can also do very well in humidities of, you know, 30 to 50. I wouldn't go on the 30 end just because that's a little dry, but as long as they have a proper substrate, have a water, like a large enough water bowl, as you can see, she's kind of sitting in hers in that picture I had. Um, as long as you provide those things, they should have no problem shedding. I also in that picture as you can see had her shed jumbled up but she had one complete shed she always does um, and that's what you aim for you aim for the correct humidity and heat and environment for them to be able to have a nice clean shed and like I said hers is at like 45 is what the hydrometer last read and she's doing great so you don't need that high of a humidity I don't miss down the enclosure anytime except for whenever I clean it um, just to like give the the substrate a little bit of moisture but other than that she does a great job in the humidity she's in so that pretty much covers all of housing so we're gonna move on to the diet and water as i said milk snakes specifically hunter and milk snakes are very very good eaters like hunter and milk snakes and a couple other breeds of colubrids are carnivorous that's the wrong word. Of course they're carnivor carnivorous. They eat meat. They are cannibalistic, meaning they will eat each other and other snakes, but each other. So whenever you have Hondurans, you don't house them together. Even if you're trying to breed them, you're at risk of the larger female eating your smaller male. So you want to try and have like a not fully grown female at a similar size of a male. And when you breed them, that's how it goes. But anyway, if they smell another snake on you, they will probably bite you. If they smell a mouse on your hand, they will probably bite you. If they smell meat of any kind on you, they will probably bite you. So whenever you go to feed them, make sure that you don't actually physically touch the mouse or anything, or just make sure your hand is out of the way. I feed with tongs because they are very active eaters. I have had zero problems feeding either of my milk snakes. Um, Thawed and frozen mice, of course, are the only thing I recommend for reptiles, I do, or for snakes specifically. I do not recommend feeding live mice, so I do thawed, thawed and frozen, and I get those mice from Lane Labs. I'll link them down below. I've had them linked in a couple videos. Um, but yeah, they are cannibals by nature. They're not very picky, so feeding them is really easy. 
they're likely to bite you if you smell like food because of that. So those are things you need to keep in mind. Now, for a baby Honduran or a baby snake of any kind, you can feed, um, especially for hatchlings, I would recommend this for hatchlings, a one thawed pinky um, every seven to ten days or if they're really really babies every four to seven days but whenever they get older you do not want to feed more than once every two weeks because as i said they get lazy they will become obese if you give them the option to eat they'll just eat any any and, and then eventually you'll have an obese milk snake which is a lot harder to deal with than you would think so for that i recommend either a large or jumbo mat mat I recommend either a large or jumbo mouse. Um, I have Halo, my smaller male that was seen in another video. I have him on large mice. And I have uh, Boo on jumbo mice. Because she is significantly larger. At least six inches larger. Um, she was the one you saw in the pic- like longer. She was the one you saw in the picture. I'm not getting her or him out today because it is a feeding day. And I'm not gonna mess with them. Everyone should know once you feed a snake you don't mess with it for a couple of days. Um, just, you know, it, it'd be impolite if someone were to like go and you know, touch you a whole bunch after you ate. It's not a nice thing to do to reptiles either. But yeah, so feed them every 14 days at least to 17 days. I have them on a, uh, currently, I think it's 16 days, um, schedule. I have the Hondurans on the same schedule as the ball python on a 16 day schedule. And then I have obviously Wilbur smaller. He eats more often. I feed him once every 10 days um but again that it's different snakes different feeding schedules so yeah don't feed the adults more than like every two weeks if you don't want them to get fat yay good to know and um let's see that oh another thing about them you don't want to have an itty bitty bitty water bowl as i showed you she has a medium sized water bowl like she can slither in and out of it you need to make sure that they always have fresh water, so get fresh water every day. Um, if you have any reptiles or animals, do this anyway. I, I don't think you should leave a water bowl because um, it's hard to check with reptiles, especially if they went in their water. So it's always good to make sure that they have fresh, clean water and a big enough bowl to where they can slither through it. Now, keep the bowl of water on the cooler side of the tank because keeping it on the warm side would raise humidity too much, cause it to evaporate quicker, and could cause a higher humidity than what you want. And with all snakes, too high of a humidity can cause respiratory infections, and that's something that no snake owner wants to deal with at any point in their lives. So... Yes, now that we have covered the first two, we're going to cover the last thing, which is not really necessarily, like, specifically for Hondurans. I just haven't put it in the other care guide video I did uh, for the Hognos, and I had someone message me on Instagram about it, so I'm going to put it in this video. This is for you, buddy. Cleaning you gotta clean the enclosure. Um, there's not a whole lot to say other than spot clean the enclosure every... I spot clean it every day or every other day. And then deep clean it every four weeks. Um, whenever you do that, of course, use a reptile safe disinfectant. Make sure that everything's clean. Soak your plant, fake plants in the disinfectant for a bit and then run it through water a couple of times. Do not use tap water if you can use a distilled water or a RO water. Um, we have RO water here, so I just run them through the water and everything's good. But you don't want to make you you want to make sure the enclosure is clean, but you don't want to harm your animal in the process. So yeah, I don't really know what else to say. Um, I know it's kind of a quick care guide, but I did cover you know the temperatures, the humidity. Um, substrate that's about all else i can talk about so we're going to cover that really quick for these substrates for your hunter mold snakes depending on the levels of humidity you want will depend on the substrate you get 
I have my male in an aspen bedding because for some reason he likes it a whole lot more than than my female did. She would just sit on top of it. He actually burrows. Um, and for the female, I have her on a cedar mulch. What is she on? Yes, oh my goodness, she's on forced floor cedar mulch with a mixture of um, cocoa fiber. She's uh, she's on she's on a mixture. I don't know why that was hard for me. I'm sorry, guys. But yeah. So anyway, as you could see in the picture, she's on a mulch, which I, as I said, missed down once. Um, one time whenever I'm doing my four routine four week cleaning for her just to kind of give it that extra little oomph of uh, humidity and moisture for her and it lasts her pretty much throughout the whole thing my hydrometer doesn't really change much like it shows the normal like air humidity doesn't go up much whenever I do that so she's in good hands um in that aspect but yeah now that I've covered every single aspect of the basic basic basics for caring for a Honduran milk snake. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I know you guys have been waiting for this video for a while and I hope I was able to do a good enough job, especially for those of you who keep messaging me on Instagram. This is for y'all. Yay! Also, I would like to give a quick like thank you and shout out to all of you and especially those of you who follow me on Instagram and message me on Instagram and let me know you watch my videos and those of you who routinely comment on my videos and like stay in contact with me and let me know like, hey, I like your videos. Hey, I want to see this. Hey, I want to do this. That is so wonderful in my opinion and I'm so thankful for you guys. Um, again, I know this wasn't like a super in-depth care guide, but I wanted to tell you guys like the basics of caring for a Honduran milk snake because so many of you have reached out to me about your milk snakes or wanting a Honduran or having questions are they that much different than Sinaloans what about my Puebloan what do I do with this what do I do with this and I just am super thankful for the feedback and I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope to be producing some more fun um and educational content for you soon i have some big plans that i really want to do and we're just gonna hope that they all work out so anyway thank you guys for watching i'm super thankful for all of you i hope you liked today's video please give a big thumbs up and subscribe if you already haven't and i can't wait to see you next time bye